the fourth Futurological Symposium is, um, is behind the times. Um, he comes from a network in Central America, Mexico, that has been doing this for almost 20 years. Same thing, same linkage. Perhaps not as transnational as we are, but this is new stuff, and the Futurological Symposium may well travel to Central America, Mexico, continue this work, but Ivan has got something to tell us, and I am very anxious to hear it. Hello, hello. So good evening, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, first of all, I just want to say thank you to the symposium and to Liminal Village for the program today. And all of this week has been really amazing, and I just feel really honored to have been invited to share. So um, the topic of this conversation is uh, expanding more upon this uh, topic of free cultural spaces, which has been discussed uh, today. Um, but taking it to another region of the planet, uh, which is Latin America. Uh, my name is Ivan, I am from Mexico, and uh, my work there, my experience has been with a series of networks, uh, organizations, communities, um, uh, working to um, link each other in sustainability, but also uh, with the festival culture movement. And so um, it is a little bit sharing of uh, two, two different organizations mainly, which is CASA and Project Nuevo Mundo. I'll share what those um, organizations are and, um, and how they are building, expanding this network of, of, of free cultural spaces, not using that name, but uh, more or less is the same uh, theme. So first of all, uh, what is an eco-village? Uh, how many of you uh, have heard this term or have been to an eco-village? This is the definition of the eco-village, uh, one of the many definitions. Uh, it is actually a very recent term. It was only coined in the 70s. And this is uh, the definition uh, made by Robert and Diane Gilman of the Eco-Villages and Sustainable Communities Manual in 1991. Uh, but even though this is a, a new term, the eco-villages uh, have existed, uh, as we know, like for thousands and thousands of years all over the world, indigenous villages were eco-villages, you know, seeking to uh, integrate our social, our, our community with um, the environment and, and trying to uh, maintain this into the future. It's only with uh, after the, the Industrial Revolution that we can say that villages or towns were not eco anymore. So this, this is a new term to describe something that has existed really for millennia um, and then also integrated into this topic is the, the 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 subject of permaculture how many of you are familiar here with with permaculture so permaculture is a combination of, of design techniques and uh, values that um, are a way to design our habitat around us in a way that it can be sustainable and that we can help to regenerate the planet while building uh, our, our, in our culture, our communities. It is a way to link the, the, the development of our culture with the sustainability of the planet. Permaculture comes from permanent agriculture. It is a term that started uh, in Australia in the 60s by uh, Bill Mollison um, and other thinkers that came up with this, mainly thinking about the uh, agricultural aspect, but it has expanded now permaculture to be uh, also uh, meaning permanent culture. So not only permanent agriculture, but also how to build uh, a permanent culture on the planet. And also like eco-villages, permaculture is something that we have done for millennia and it is a way that communities have uh, interacted with the planet. It is just a new term uh, to describe uh, something that we have done uh, always and uh, this is the flower of permaculture it, it's showing the different area that it expands into it includes education and culture health and spiritual well-being finances and economics um, land tenure and community governance um, I can't read it very well here but uh, land and nature stewardship building so these are different areas of the flower of permaculture and the center you see what the values of permaculture are, which is care for the earth, care for the people, and fair share. Um, 
So yeah, basically it's uh, something that is explained in modern language, but that in fact is just an, uh, uh, has come from uh, the ancient way uh, many cultures have lived on planet Earth. And so um, the, what I'm talking about here mostly is going to be uh, about weaving networks and how we can weave networks of communities together with festivals. And today we have the, the, the tool of the World Wide Web and, and the, base, the main thing about networks is how we can interconnect each point with each other which, without having to have a centralized connection point. So it is uh, using the World Wide Web now that we have the capability of supporting the interaction between these type of centers, which are uh, many living off the grid or uh, seeking alternative lifestyles or, um, and, and uh, they are outside the system in a way. So to be able to strengthen these, um, the, the communication and the interaction between these communities and these movements, uh, it is important to strengthen and to create uh, networks. Uh, so uh, one of the, biggest network. I don't know how many of you have heard of the Global Eco Village Network. Can I see some hands? How many people have heard? Well, it's a global network of eco villages. Uh, there's Gen Europe. These are the regions of the Global Eco Village Network. We have Gen Europe, uh, Oceania and Asia, uh, Africa, Gen Africa. And then there was the Eco Village Network of the Americas, which uh, was for a long time the region that uh, was uh, pertinent to the American continent. So a few years back, there was a series of meetings between different uh, eco-villages in Latin America in which I participated. And uh, the Latin American movement of eco-villages is very diverse. And in some way, uh, they have not been able to uh, f find themselves to fit under this definition of eco-village, which is more like a, a westernized understanding of, of the eco village, like I said, it's a, it's a new definition. But uh, the permaculture and the eco village movement in Latin America has expanded uh, so diversely that it's not only uh, eco villages mostly refer to intentional communities, which are like uh, communities that started in the 60s and 70s with, with like the ones we saw this morning with people deciding to leave the cities and make their commune or, or communities and now have defined it under this name eco-villages. In Latin America, uh, the movement is very diverse and it also involves mo uh, organizations and communities in the urban environment, uh, co-housing experiments, educational centers. So not necessarily these are places that can be defined under the word eco-village. So this is why, and also uh, there's the language barrier, which is eco-village network of the Americas is in English and uh, CASA uh, pertains to the region of the Latin America where uh, we speak Spanish and Portuguese uh, and, and don't really, many people don't really understand or speak English and there was this communication problem. So uh, we decided to create a new region within the Global Eco Village Network and it is called CASA which is um, the Consejo de Asentamientos Sustentables de las Americas, or in English, the Council of Sustainable Settlements of the Ameri Americas. And basically what this is, it's a network, uh, an online network, an online database of communities all over Latin America that are intentional communities, that are eco-villages, but are also many other different things. And these five petals are explaining a little bit what uh, the different areas of the eco-village um, of CASA are, and these are uh, the urban focus is the, the orange one, uh, rural focus is more uh, eco-villages, and I'll go through them a little bit more deeply right now. Uh, we also have the educational focus, which are educational projects, maybe not communities themselves, but just a place where you can come and learn about uh, different techniques, uh, both ecological, social, spiritual, um, Organizations, these are nonprofit organizations, they are foundations, they are co cooperatives, different organizations that are, are also maybe not communities in themselves, but they're organizations that are supporting the expansion of this uh, diverse movement. And also the nomadic pedal is uh, speaking about the nomadic groups that maybe are a nomadic community not fixed in a place, but are traveling in buses or in horses. And, and there's many examples of that right now. So uh, I'll just uh, share a little bit more deeper about the different pedals. This is a community focus. 
These are eco-villages, the ones that do define themselves as eco-villages. Intentional communities, which not necessarily is an eco-village, it's just an intentional community. It can have more of a spiritual focus rather than an ecological focus. Co-housing projects, these can be things in rural areas or in urban centers, but also just sharing at one house, not necessarily a larger land. And also indigenous villages. And this is important because there are many communities in Latin America which are indigenous communities, indigenous villages that maybe did not uh, do not define themselves as an eco-village or did not study permaculture, but they have been applying this for thousands of years and have all the right to also be recognized as a, an eco-village. And for the network, it is important to integrate these communities as they have a lot to offer as well in terms of learning and exchange. Um, the other area is the urban focus, and this includes transition towns, which is a growing movement of uh, urban spots where they are integrating tools to reduce carbon footprint and to educate people about sustainability issues, not necessarily turning your city into a complete eco city, but at least a neighborhood or part by part. This is a growing movement all over the world. Eco Barrios is also uh, very big in Latin America. It started in Colombia. Eco Barrio means eco neighborhood. It's also a, a word now like eco villages. And uh, these are places where it is and then urban co-housing. But basically, the Eco Barrios is seeking to target places of, um, of uh, where there's a lot of challenges, economic challenges, social challenges, violence, and to bring these ecologic tools, such as permaculture, organic gardening, decision-making tools into these barrios, into these neighborhoods. So uh, it is not only eco-villages or communities for people that are privileged to be able to leave the city and construct the dream that they want, but also to bring these tools to people that most need them inside urban areas. And this is where the eco barrios idea and also why the urban focus for uh, permaculture and the eco-village movement is. Um, the nomadic focus is also something very original to Casa, but uh, it comes also from the, an ancient term called chasquis, which means travelers or messengers uh, in the ancient Quechua language in South America. And it was that in these ancient times, there were always nomadic groups that were traveling from uh, nation to nation, from tribe to tribe, and they were the collectors of stories, the collectors of seeds, the collectors, and they would, they would create this exchange between the community. So actually, these networks have existed for millennia as well, and the chasquis, the nomads have always been an important part of it. So today we have many uh, nomadic tribes, many uh, rainbow tribes, uh, buses, uh, educational caravans, and this part of CASA is a way to uh, help network between these communities and help these, these uh, traveling communities to connect with centers as they travel to connect to different centers in different countries in Latin America. And I'll share a little bit more uh, uh, later about the Caravan Arcoiris for, for La Paz, which is the Rainbow Peace Caravan. And then this one here is the Horse Caravan. I don't know if any of you have heard or, or met them, but Karin, the founder, he is camped at Sacred Fire. He has these circular tents, which he designed and he's been traveling for 13 years all over the world, but mainly in Central America and in, uh, South America and India, and is now going to do a caravan here in Europe where people travel on horseback. Sometimes they've had up to 40 horses traveling through different countries, living completely off the grid, and they're really an example of one of these Chasqui traveler caravan communities. And there's several others. This one is called um, Comun Tierra, and they also have a website, and they've traveled uh, through all of Latin America in the last three years, visiting different e eco projects. Um, the organizational focus is more has to do with the NGOs, nonprofit organizations, foundations, networks. There's many different uh, of these, but the importance to have them here is that uh, they also might not necessarily have an eco village or live in a community, but they are doing a lot of the work to try and support these grassroots organizations to flourish. Um, and the educational uh, focus, of course, there's many educational centers, which are like alternative educational projects, permaculture demonstration centers, and eco-technology demonstration centers. Now, many of these centers can be both one and the other, you know, they can, uh, I think that may be a boom when this develops more and they own the land, this could become an educational center and a community. So they, they can combine, they can, you can be one 
um, two or two or three of the pedals at the same time. This is just a way to understand how the, the di diversification of these uh, movements and these uh, organizations. So basically, CASA articulates and strengthens the Latin American national networks that promote, educate, and research about sustainable and regenerative lifestyles. And a big aspect of CASA, which is not in the pedal, petals, is the gatherings and the festivals. And there's a big tradition, um, like my friend said before, uh, there's a movement of about 20 years. Uh, I started participating in the gatherings when I was only 15. And these gatherings basically are like an eco-village permaculture gatherings. They're not necessarily festivals in the way like, like this or like we know them. It is uh, kind of self-organized. People come and they uh, uh, start offering different workshops. Everybody participates in shifts in the kitchen. We all work together to make the gathering happen. And these gatherings have happened uh, in, in many Latin American countries in the past 20 to 30 years. And it is a very important gathering point to exchange ideas, to exchange seeds, to exchange, uh, you know, uh, dreams for the future. And it is a, a sort of like an independent, autonomous, free cultural zone. Um, and the, the main one that uh, is in Mexico is called the Consejo de Visiones or Council of Vision, Vision Council Guardians of the Earth. It started about 20 years. It happens every other year, not consistently. It is hosted in a different community each time. It's around 600 to 1,000 people each time. And uh, it brings together a, a wide variety of, of different movements and organizations that are linked to the eco-village and permaculture movement, but that also have to do with different areas in human life. Uh, this, there's a model for the organization of the council since it, it is an autonomous zone and all the decisions are made in consensus during the event. So it can be a little bit chaotic to come to some decisions, like we don't have a, an organizing board that is uh, you know, making all the decisions for us. But everybody's really being part of the, of the construction and the development of the program of the event. And so the, this is in Spanish, but it's showing the different councils which are ecology, spirituality, social movements, solid uh, economy, like alternative currencies, art and culture, which are all the concerts and, and music, uh, eco-villages and sustainability, uh, youth, um, Nosferico, which is uh, like the Mayan calendar, um, alternative time uh, air focus, education, health and healing, and so what these are, are they're like mini camps. Like here we have the stages. There would, would be like a, a, a stage where it's all about just uh, youth, all about just spirituality, all about just uh, social movements. And what this is, is, is like a model of organization of society where each of the councils make decisions between themselves and then bring it to the larger council when things need to be decided around issues regarding ecology or decision making. And I think even kids is not here, but there is also a kids council. And early on in the forum, they were talking about how to involve kids into the, the decision making. And that's something that's very important in the vision council because uh, it's giving a voice to the children as well. Yeah. And so uh, a lot of the Vision Council was greatly inspired by the bioregional movement of North America, which is an ecological movement basing itself around on the bioregional idea, which is that instead of political borders, we should be focusing on national borders, such as rivers, uh, mountains, lakes. That, that is what divides uh, natural areas, and that's how indigenous people always divided their land. And, uh, and when we uh, look, uh, divide ourselves by political regions, we may not necessarily be taking into consideration very important aspects. So the bioregional movement was sort of a so source of inspiration for the Vision Council uh, uh, events and gatherings that have been happening for around 20 years. And these are uh, a little bit more pictures. A uh, big part of the Vision Council is integrating indigenous traditions, indigenous cultures. So we have elders from different communities come and share their ceremonies, share their stories, sit around the fire with us all during, during the week. So it's a very beautiful event. Uh, in that aspect. And also the art aspect is very important. So we do have music, we have theater, we have all types of performances, but uh, we're not paying any of the artists to come. It's everybody's part of the community. Even the elders and the artists just come uh, as everybody else and participates like everybody else in the, in the building of the event in the community event. Uh, and then the Caravan for Peace uh, left Mexico 
1996 and it traveled from thir for 13 years uh, all over South America, Central and South America, visiting different eco-villages and organizing these types of events in different parts of South America. And they eventually ended in Brazil where they were working with the Ministry of Culture, Ministerio de Cultura. This is Gilberto Gil, who was at that time the Minister of Culture of Brazil. And he, the Ministry of Culture, hired the, the caravan to do a cultural caravan, a cultural free space caravan to travel through Brazil during two years, organizing these types of events and going also to a lot of indigenous villages, uh, favelas, and this type of thing. And um, this is uh, a little bit of like the overall view of the gatherings that have been happening, uh, 20 years in Mexico, four years in Costa Rica, eight years already in Colombia, and there's been also one in, uh, Brazil and one in Peru and one in Puerto Rico as well. And it's the same model idea of gathering, self-organized uh, free cultural space gathering that uh, has emerged. Uh, and the ENCA is uh, very well known in Brazil. It's the Encontro Nacional de Comunidades Alternativas uh, or the uh, National Gathering of Alternative Communities, also uh, anarchist communities and rainbow communities coming from Arco Iris, which is uh, rainbow. So it's been going on for 30 years. It has uh, like 5,000, 6,000 people that come. It lasts like two or three weeks. Um, it all runs on Magic Hat. It's like a fully non-commercial event and also off the grid, no electricity. Uh, a little bit like a rainbow gathering, but more, f more focused on the educational aspect. And this is just an uh, example of the, the agreements of, uh, of living that we make in these type of gatherings. Uh, it is just something that we come to together and they're just basic agreements. So it's like a semi-anarchic event with no rules really, but just a series of agreements in which we can live in harmony during the time that we are together. But it, it is showing like the different organizations regarding uh, garbage, communication, the sacred fire, uh, so on. I have little time, so I'm gonna move faster. This is a, an event that they do, the ENCA takes to a, a larger forum, which is the World Social Forum. Uh, that's happened in many countries, but mainly in Brazil every year. And there's a big camp of uh, the eco-village and permaculture movement and the ENCA that come there to make a, a, a free cultural space focused on sustainability and spirituality and bridging uh, political, spiritual, and e uh, ecology into one space. So it's a very radical uh, free space in a big event. And just to finish this part about CASA, this is the website. It's uh, just been launched this year. It took about two years to basically get the whole thing going. And it's a network where everybody can have a profile. The, the centers have a profile. Each center can uh, show what activities they have going on. And basically it's a means so people can generate better exchange, exchange of resources, exchange of, um, of people, of, the, of, of skills. Uh, and so it's an online network that has been uh, already launched and it's part of the Global Eco Village Network. And then uh, the potential, well, is this crisscrossing of different communities uh, all over Latin America. And then the other organization that I want to share with you is Project Nuevo Mundo. This is more an organization that is focused on linking uh, people, travelers from all over the world uh, that want to go to Latin America and experience uh, volunteering or working or staying at one of these type of centers. Uh, it is a little bit like uh, the idea is to create something a little bit like couch surfing or woofing where uh, it's, it's being launched this month in Beta. Uh, so you can uh, also have a profile and you can see the profiles of the centers. You can recommend, people can recommend you and you can uh, find out uh, a lot uh, like where you would like to visit. And the idea is basically to link individual people with projects and centers to create a regenerative planet. And our hope is to expand this uh, all over the world in the next few years. Yeah. And uh, the way we define the centers here is called impact center. So it's not an eco village because like I said, the eco-village is a very narrow definition. This can also be an indigenous village, an eco-tourism center. And uh, this is a, a quick look on what the website will look like. And uh, like the, the organizations can, the centers can open a profile and list what type of facilities they are offering um, and so on. This is more about uh, how the website uh, will look. 
And so I really invite you to check it out. It's projectnuevomundo.org. And if you're interested in traveling to Central and South America or helping to expand this to your region of the planet, uh, yeah, please stay in touch. So um, when this organization started being launched last year, we created a caravan of two buses that left California. This is a, an organization that is based in the United States, trying to link with uh, the movement in Central and South America. And uh, this was called Earth Odyssey, and it was a bus tour uh, taking 20 uh, ed educators, sustainability educators and activists to different communities in Central America to uh, more or less tell this story and also to um, portray you know, this type of, uh, of world that is possible that we want to create. Nosotros somos un sueño, caminamos en grupo. Everything around us is alive. Y en este momento somos uno realmente, ¿sabe? Esto es un desiderato cósmico, pertenece a un tejido cósmico. Estamos generando el cambio. And so we have to change everything from the inside out. Crear una nueva conciencia. Connecting with these threads of love. Soñar esa visión y hacer la realidad. Ser ya ese nuevo mundo que queremos vivir. Eso es un buen viaje. Hacia adentro. Project Nuevo Mundo is a platform that connects people and impact centers, encouraging resource sharing on the web and on the ground to catalyze planetary regeneration and individual transformation. An impact center is a physical location that offers sustainable and holistic living education to empower individual change. The Earth Odyssey is a bus tour comprised of 20 skilled individuals called Econauts. We are visiting impact centers from California to Panama with the intention of leaving a positive trace by sharing holistic wellness and permaculture practices. We want to empower people to design diverse and resilient landscapes that mimic the patterns found in nature to regenerate the local ecosystems while fulfilling human needs abundantly. And now here we are and um, we're on the first week of our journey, really excited growing the new world, one piece of land at a time. Earth Odyssey has arrived at this beautiful gathering where environmentalists, healers, artists, and elders work together in building a temporary eco-village. It's a place where we come to share, to learn, to harvest from all of these different movements so that we can bring this knowledge, this inspiration on the road ahead of us. Es un gigantesco poema.
Después de haber recibido tantas bendiciones, estamos inspirados para seguir con nuestro viaje. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. ay, ay. Gracias. Buen viaje. Salud, suerte. No se regalan. We are called to work together because we share a similar vision, we share a similar dream. Maybe to bring something into our lives or maybe to create community, or maybe to uh, regenerate the planet. This is the first time, it's the first time that four caravans, cuatro caravanas, are coming here together. Huehuecoyoc fue creado por una caravana de siete autobuses. When they see that all oh, these people are living and sacrificing their lives for something that's different, that's not just for making money or something, then their perspective on life opens. And you can plant that awesome, amazing seed, which is called awe, and, and cannot be replicated. And when something jumps from out of this place that's much more real than everything else and that just shakes out anything that people know as knowledge, and they just surrender it all and they're just in awe, those moments are moments where people can actually make that leap of change. And so we have to change everything from the inside out and intertwine the modern world in the mix. And I think when, when these two cultures, or many, many cultures can meet, there in that intersection lies the Is possibility it? of a future that fulfills all, all the levels of what the human potential, what the human experience can be. And, and that all together creates this alchemy that might change one kid in every school or one kid in somewhere distant. And for that and for that alone, the journey is worthwhile.
rausenden, dass wir alle eins sind. Es ist nicht wichtig, welche Sprache ich spreche. Ihr könnt mich verstehen, denn es ist mein Herz, das zu euch spricht. Wir kommen zusammen, denn wir sehen das Licht. Und wir gehen in die neue Zukunft, werden wir uns treffen dort und zusammen Freude haben. but you can see this video on Vimeo and we have actually five shorts that came out of this uh, journey. Five short videos that you can see, uh, see them on Vimeo. Project Nuevo Mundo and really my time is up but I'll just finish really quickly. We organize these events in Central America every year. One is Cosmic Convergence which is a New Year festival in Lake Atitlan, Guatemala. You're all invited and Tribal Alliance Retreat which is a post envision festival in Costa Rica along with different organizations and trying to bridge this festival culture with eco-village permaculture and also indigenous wisdom. And uh, also this workshop beginning of January in Guatemala and we're currently supporting the Permaculture Action Tour with Polish Ambassador, which is an artist tour in the US. And uh, there's a campaign online, which was la launched last week, which is all about bringing permaculture education along with artists and festivals, so yes. And then just finally, um, this art uh, is by Mark Henson. It's really representative for me because it is showing this middle point from uh, where we are coming from, which is a time of chaos and destruction uh, of the planet and what we are moving to. It's called New Pioneers. And it is saying that this is just the beginning and this is a growing movement and invite you all to be part of this new movement of regenerating the earth, of greening the earth, of beautifying the planet. And uh, Boom is definitely an example of how the, uh, They've been doing this and trying to make this a permanent festival, applying all of these permaculture tools um, all over. And um, yeah, so thank you. Thank you, Ivan.